Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us on Ludicrous Feed on episode three of the Nightly Charge. Lots of Tesla news to get through today, so let's get straight into it. The first thing I want to do is watch this full self-driving video with you guys. So let's press play. And there we are. He's setting the uh, full self-driving mode in the Tesla Model 3 on navigation and the rep's hands are just in his laps and obviously the car is steering itself, which I still find pretty amazing. But what is amazing is that uh, it's changing lanes, it's stopping at traffic lights, turning left or you know that's their left in america which is on their uh it's a big right for us uh but joining an on-ramp on a freeway overtaking slower cars even though it's in the right lane that, that's just amazing really uh keeping pretty close to the speed limit i mean 75 i imagine that's what he set it at or at least that's what the car senses as the speed limit going on the off-ramp joining another freeway at uh you know at an interchange um joining another freeway going to another off-ramp, joining another freeway. I mean, this is this is the west coast of the US, right? Lots of freeways, but um, you know, changing lanes again to find a better lane. Like, I know it's in fast forward, but it's still pretty amazing. Uh, this goes on for another two minutes, you know, just overtaking. Sorry about the uh, lag, it's, uh, it's, it's catching up uh, as it's downloading. But here, changing lanes, and I think going to go on an off-ramp pretty soon. There we are, another off-ramp. Uh, stopping at a stop sign, looking around joining another road and uh, joining another big road, another traffic light, um, you know, keeping to its lane pretty well. I mean, this is driving better, better than some people, I've got to say. Um, and I think it's now going to go back to base, basically. I imagine this is somewhere in Silicon Valley. Uh, it kind of looks like that place. You know, I, I, We've been there before, my family and I, for a quick trip a couple of years ago. And there it is heading back to the Tesla base, I imagine. And uh, yeah, it looks so easy, right? <laughs> and the rep just gets out. Yeah, cool. I mean, that's, that's a nice shot too. It's in the twilight, so good time to film. That's the full self-driving mode. Um, have a look at, at it for yourself. It's, um, it's pretty amazing. So that's the full self-driving mode video. The second thing I want to talk to you about is, uh, is Autonomy Day, which kind of coincided when the video was released for this one. So... Autonomy Day was um, pretty full on. Like it, it was a two-hour presentation essentially. Um, I'll just pull this up for you now if I can get to it. Here we go. So there it is. There's the slide here for you. So I mean, uh, I've got to say uh, this is not my background. I'm not a computer engineer or anything like that. But you know, I'm just a layperson, and I found. Uh, this quite difficult to understand. Sorry about that. Let's go back. Oop, I click something, obviously. Um, so I found, you know, I found this fairly difficult to understand. Quite a lot of technical terms, um, but a few things I took out of it was number one. Basically, I think Tesla was just trying to show the world that yes, it's doing a lot of work in the auto autonomous driving field. They've got something called a neural network, which is basically a lot of detail. Um, you know, companies like NVIDIA, which was their big um, competitor, came out to say today, basically going, wow, Tesla are streets ahead of us after the Autonomy Day presentation. So that was um, pretty impressive. Um, I think that was the point of that day, just to show the world that, yeah, you know, this is what we're capable of. This is why investors keep investing in us. Um, the next point that I think I got out of from that presentation was RoboTaxi. So uh, Tesla recently announced that uh, Model 3 can be leased in the US, but you don't get to keep your car at the end of the lease. Um, Tesla take it back and I think they're going to create their own ride sharing fleet from that so I think that's the take home message from from uh, Autonomy Day so those two things as well um, the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that uh, where's my cursor so Model S and X are getting a range upgrade without an increase in their battery capacity and that's due to a more um, more efficient system with uh, with, their, with their lubrication and their gearing, um, sorry, their bearings, and a new permanent magnet motor. Again, I don't understand too much about that, except to say that it's more efficient and better suspension as well. So, for example, the Model S is going from 550 kilometers to 600 kilometer range, um, and Elon Musk tweeted that it can basically drive from Los Angeles to San Francisco, which is a six-hour drive, um, in you know in one charge. It's pretty impressive. And um, if you're going to drive from Sydney to Melbourne, that's about 800 to 9, well, probably closer to 900 kilometers. So you could potentially do that now in in one charge halfway through. 
in the new high range Model S. Um, and you know, with version three supercharging coming, which can charge at 200 kilowatts, potentially 250 kilowatts, that's like a 30 minute charge. So range anxiety will probably not be an issue very soon. Can you drive from Sydney to Melbourne in one, one charge one day, potentially? And that'll certainly give the diesel cars a run for their money. So that's the new uh, increased range for Model S, Model X. The next thing I wanna talk about is the Shanghai Tesla Model S Fire. So this created quite a bit of news. Uh, like this Fire, bad news travels very quickly, unfortunately. And when it comes to Tesla, people love to watch this kind of stuff. So let me show this to you right now. Okay, I'll stop that right there. So th let's go back to the beginning of this video. So, okay, so basically what happened was that this Tesla Model S here in this car park with a couple of other cars, an Audi, I think, and a couple of other high-end high cars, um, basically just combusted. So with no trigger, it just sort of started flaming like this, and then boom, it just explodes. So, uh, from what I've read in my own research is that this is a 2015 Model S or at least a Generation 1 Model S. This person's had it for about two to three years now. Uh, he had a supercharge about a few hours ago before this fire and it's hard to know whether it's real or not. I mean the fire is real, whether there was an accelerant used, hard to say. We don't really have the facts just yet so Tesla is investigating. I'd like to know what happened. Um, I've tried to, to look up a couple of videos on lithium ion battery fires and yes it does kind of happen like that with a slow you know release of steam and then it'll explode so it's a legit lithium ion fire whether an accelerant was used I don't know so we'll find out very shortly a couple of other interesting things from this video so no casualties were reported which is good uh, Tesla is investigating that's also good yeah you know add concerns about uh, safety of electric vehicles um, I'll come back to that in one second China recorded 40 related fires uh, involving new energy vehicles in 2018. Like, seriously, okay. Ice vehicle, internal combustion engine. Like, they are designed to cause fires, or small fires and explosions inside the engine to power the car. And I'll read you what Elon Musk said in his tweet, which I found quite amusing. And I think this says it all. He wrote a couple of, uh, yesterday, he said, uh, over a million combustion engine is right there in the name car fires per year and thousands of deaths but one tesla car fire with no injuries gets biggest headlines why the double standard next tweet reality is a tesla like most electric vehicles is over 500 percent less likely to catch fire than combustion engine cars which carry massive amounts of highly flammable fuel why is this never mentioned well elon you and i know why that's the case um so yeah i mean look this this video alone said there were 40 related fires in a year whereas you know, like million combustion engine fires per year. I think the US is like, you know, dozens per day, basically. Um, so, you know, fires do happen, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a, there's a you know, any, any electric vehicle fire is going to make the news at this stage because there's obviously some resistance against changing over to them. Anyway, that's, um, I won't pass too much judgment on that, but that's basically the, the Shanghai Tesla Model S fire. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, which is making news today, is this one, this article here, Tesla losing money again as the deliveries decline. So basically, um, Tesla's posted two quarters of profit in 2018, and thanks to Model S, uh, sorry, Model 3 deliveries, but this quarter they're posting a, a significant loss, $700 million. That's probably worse than what um, even some conservative um, uh, analysts uh, were uh, estimating. Why did that happen? Well, basically Tesla's business model, because it doesn't deal with dealers, it's a direct revenue sale. So uh, they don't get the money until the, sh the car is shipped. So for example, in, in this quarter, we know that a lot of cars were shipped to Europe and China. So that, that's a lead time. So that's at least a couple of weeks for a ship to get to port in Europe and China. So I think there was some delay in delivering these cars. 
Um, so whenever there's an overseas sale with the direct revenue, direct sale model, you know, Tesla is not going to get the money until the car is shipped to the customer. So I think, look, I'm a, an optimist, not just with Tesla, but I think I like to look at the vision of the company. I think it's a long-term game. Um, I think in time it'll it'll be fine, but just you know, there's going to be losses along the way. You can't you can't possibly continue to grow all the time. Like this is how it should look as you grow as a company. So I think with the, the Gigafactory three in China coming up, that should help sales as well into the next couple of years. So that production of that factory is going up very quickly. Just have a look for it yourself on Twitter and and on uh, in, on regular news. So I think don't worry too much. I think um, sure, seven hundred million dollars is a lot of money, but um, yeah, that's probably probably explained by the deliveries overseas and also the fact that they made a down payment on the bond as well in the US. Um, so that's that. And the last thing I want to talk to you about before I sign off is basically I love receiving uh, viewer mail. And uh, thank you very much, guys, for uh, writing to me via email, ludicrousfeed at gmail.com, posting um, or commenting on my posts on Facebook, Instagram, uh, replying to me on Twitter. Uh, thank you for so much for that. I try to respond as much as I can and also writing to me via Messenger and Facebook. So I try to respond all the time if I can. This was a very nice thing for Gareth um, to say. He said, G'day Tom, been following your great channel for a while now, which has given me a lot of great information before I got my Tesla Powerwall 2 up. I've just built a new house in Harvey Bay, Queensland, decided to go with Solar Heart, do a full install just a few days after the handover of my new build. Um, so he installed a 6.6 kilowatt array and he says that um, he's got a small grid facing sun up, so I assume east, so the battery starts to charge as soon as the sun comes up, and the larger array facing north, very sensible. I'm finding most days my battery is charged between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., which is amazing, and the rest of the day I'm just push, pushing, putting back into the grid or using the power in my house, which is good. Here are some of his picks. He's um, produced quite a lot of energy already, 603 kilowatt hours with a 6.6 .6 kilowatt array, and he's exported quite a lot of that to the grid. So well done, Gareth. That's fantastic. That's a nice pick of your Tesla Powerwall 2 in your garage, I assume. And there's some nice looking panels there on his uh, nice new house. I can just see you there, Gareth. Uh, and uh, there's another pick there. So I assume that's probably north facing, that's the larger array, and then the east facing array here on that side to catch the morning sun. So thanks, Gareth, for sending that, sending that in. And guys, anybody else who wants to uh, send in pics of their uh, panels or power wall too, with a quick description, I'll be very happy to put them up on this channel. All right, guys, well, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate uh, you following my channel and supporting Ludicrous Feed. Don't forget to use my referral code if you're on the market for a new Tesla. That will get you 1,500 kilometers of free supercharging. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And looking forward to hearing from you from uh, all this Tesla news that I've gone through in this video. All right, guys, stand by for my hashtag, Roads to Down Under Pledge. And as always, happy charging. I do solemnly promise... Should I win a Roadster 2020 in Tesla's new referral program to list this vehicle on an electric car sharing platform to allow all Australians an opportunity to drive this magnificent car as part of a greater effort to bring the electric vehicle to this great nation? Hashtag Roadster Down Under. Help me by using my referral code Thomas7208. Thanks for watching and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. Happy charging!